I named this Architecting for the Lazy, because um, you know, who doesn't want to be lazier at work? Um, in case you missed it earlier, my name is Preston Sego. Um, I don't know if you can read this, but that's my GitHub and Twitter handle, Nullbox Populi. Um, so a little about me. Um, I'm married. I work at Developer Town. I like StarCraft. I watch a lot of TV. Uh, I like things that fly. And I like Bitcoin. So uh, back to what I'm talking about. Um, so there's a story of every app ever in the universe. It goes a little like this. Uh, you start off with a plan in the beginning, and then the customer and investor demands kind of take you away from that plan. And if marketing or sales gets involved, you know who knows what's going to happen. Like you may never return. Um, so that. That is going to generate a lot of technical debt and just all sorts of badness for your app. Uh, so in order to mitigate uh, technical debt and what is called scope creep, uh, with Rails, you have a lot of standards given to you. So you try to do those. Um, you don't want to go outside of those conventions, because the Rails way is a simple way um, that allows anyone knowing Rails to just pick up any project, and your goal is always fast development. Um, now with all that, you don't need to think about the architecture. You can really focus on the business problems you're trying to solve. But somehow, I guarantee you, your app is going to grow too big and get out of control. You're going to have all these, all these code smells that you don't know what to do with. So have you ever asked yourself, is my app too big and hard to maintain? I have the answer for you. Yeah, regardless of actual size or line count or whatever metric you want to use, it's too big. So this is because discoverability is low. Uh, this means that maintainability is low, um, more so down the road. Um, but this just happens with every app. Um, do you find that? People new to Rails have a hard time discovering how parts of your app fit together and interact. Bringing new people onto a project would be easier with less surprises. And Rails tends to have a lot of surprises because of how dynamic Ruby is. So why does this happen? Why are standard large Rails apps low in discover discoverability of functionality, maintainability, and learnability for noobs? So Rails is partially to blame. Now, it's not directly Rails, but more of how Rails walls off related files into silos. And there isn't much flexibility out of the box with the organization within these silos. For example, you have controllers, serializers, views, and services or something. So as the app grows, related files become further and further separated from each other. So imagine as your app is growing, these silos get taller and taller and taller. And let's say you have a resource called advertisements. You can't, you can't just like skip across here. You've got to crawl all the way down and then go all the way back up. And some say this is a tooling problem. They say, just use fuzzy search. But then you need to remember the existence of portions of the app, which is low discoverability, especially for new people. Uh, or your fuzzy searching is a trial and error session to find related files. It's not fun. Personally, I like to use as little exertion as possible in trying to find related files. Uh, so here I'm in a controller, and I want to find the view for this controller. I'm searching for the name of the controller, looking for the view, finally found it. Now, I probably should have started the search with views, but, you know. You live and learn. Uh, you're not always thinking uh, immediately what the best thing is to do when you want to do things quickly. Uh, but anyway. OK. So there's a fear of changing the defaults for any Rails app. Uh, this has to do with both the initial setup and with the long-term maintenance of it. Uh, Rails is almost the definition of convention over configuration, and I think that's almost to a fault. 
Um, it's why things like uh, Elixir and whatever Phoenix is becoming popular, because the more functional languages are easier to understand um, for new people. Um, now the magic behind all of what Rails does uh, scares a lot of new people, but magic is just programmatically enforced conventions, which means they can be changed. And if we'd all would just say conventions instead of magic, people might be less afraid of uh, their code. Now, in order to change the defaults, you must be comfortable with editing gems, looking at other people's code, and debugging other people's code. Did something to the clicker where it's not going. All right, anyway, so what options do you have if you want to de-silo your app such that it has better maintainability, discoverability, and learnability? There are services. These are popular nowadays. Um, they're basically just making Ruby more functional, um, which is OK. But services kind of become a dumping ground for all sorts of functionality, and it's just chaos. Um, side note, um, service is semantically incorrect. Um, so like, if you think about Auth0, that's an authentication service. Stripe is a payment processing service. Um, if you're familiar with the service pattern, uh, I think they should be called operations. Um, so yeah, uh, if you stick with services, um, they usually aren't organized well. Um, you can try to organize them in a way that kind of brings you back to the silo idea or they are disorganized and represent more um, topical-based business ideas. Um, so there's Trailblazer, which is actually where I got the name Operations from. Um, that's way more opinionated than Rails. And they, like, so Rails already has a steep learning curve, and Trailblazer, like, doubles that. And if your goal is to bring new people onto a project, you don't want to double their learning curve. <coughs> Uh, Trailblazer also doesn't feel very API oriented, um, so I like to stay away from that. So there's also the rewrite. Um, you know, maybe if you're a super Elixir fan and have 80 hours of free time every week, you can rewrite a Rails app in Elixir, um, or if you just don't have customers. But that's a ton of work, um, and it's easier to it's easy to overlook things you were taking for granted. Um, for example, I just took the node dive earlier this summer, and I learned that the node server I was using, Restify, has no logging whatsoever. You can add logging, but you need to like configure it. So when you start Rails, how it has all of that active record logging and just everything in that console, I was taking that for granted big time. And that was a big pain to set up a node. So for a more reasonable option, hopefully I have come up with something that sort of unifies all these ideas except for the rewrite and still lets you utilize the conventions of Rails. I call it drawers. It's a rail tie that adds to the Rails autoload paths such that controllers, views, operations, or anything can be grouped together in like folders. When looking for related files, you do not need to know of a file's existence. You don't even search for it. It'll just be adjacent. So I don't know if you can see this from the back, but this is resource-based. So let's say you have posts and comments. You know, everything's just underneath the post, your controller, operations policy, serializer, uh, views. Views can be grouped in there, too. So uh, discoverability is a lot easier. So to prove that I'm not full of it, here is a uh, production app. Um, which I can hand out the Git URL for if you're super skeptical of me. But here it is, the resource and the related files. Now this is an API app, so it's not as all over the place as, say, a um, traditional Rails app would be. And this is the dummy app I have in the drawers gem. It has, uh, so this is a controller. Um, it has serializer, services, operations, views, uh, a sub-resource, and a few more things. So I think this is way easier to get through my apps with. Um, so here are some links to some people doing similar things. I actually got the idea for this from Ember. Um, 
Ember has pods, which is similarly resource-based organization. Um, right now, they're trying to move it over to modular unification, which is cool. Uh, there's a guy who wrote something similar about React and Redux, um, trying to uh, reduce the separation between actions and reducers. And uh, here's another really long talk of some angry old programmer who has a similar idea. Um, any questions? That's, that's all I got. Um, so the only downside that I've encountered is in uh, development mode when everything is lazy loaded, load time can be almost unnoticeably slower because there are, I think, six or seven additional load paths or load path patterns. Um, because what it does is it overrides a method in active support uh, dependency, I think. And it just has a different flow of logic there. Um, but that's about it. Oh, um, for APIs, I had to tweak uh, some namespaces. So like normally people don't namespace their serializers or other supporting classes. And in order to put them into the resource, um, since I had like API orders, I then had to namespace my serializer under API. So it was API order serializer. But that's it. I got another one. Oh, uh, oh. Hit someone else. Okay. Steve, do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> how do you handle things that might fit in two different places? Say you've got a user as a group, and you've got an operation that adds a user to the group. Uh, you know, if it's just under controllers, like you sort of sidestep that. But how do you decide whether to put that under users, or groups, or symlink it or something crazy? <laughs> no. Um, so I would say it depends on what your root resource is. So like, if your resource is group and you have some action add. I would then put it under groups. Um, but actually, another that reminded me of another caveat I thought of was in a non-API setting, it's common to have resource, resources show up in multiple places. Like you can have post comments, comments, blog post comments. Um, and I don't really have a solution for that. This works really well for flatter resources. Do you have a question? Yeah. Are you using this on the production code base and ET or anything of that sort? Almost. I have this on a staging uh, <laughs> app right now. <laughs> Not quite production. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, who was first? Uh, mine's just inside. But okay. It's been a really long time since I used it. Uh, but Eclipse has a plugin, I think by the name of like Mylar or something like that, that does something somewhat similar, but not at all like what you're doing, but addresses your problem, where it like hides everything directly between, and then things that you open up and start working on, it like figures out how to like pull it, you know, basically everything's in the stuff that you're actually editing, let's say like your git commit is the things that you see in the tree, and then that's a thing, right? All right, cool. Uh, how much? So I have a thing against Eclipse. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> like I said, a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have another? Yeah. Is is Roar done, or are there yeah. places you'd like to go from here, like additional features or things? Um, I mean, I don't have any aspirations for it right now. Um, I mean, if anybody comes up with something that would make it beneficial to them. I think that'd be fun to add if it's beneficial to everybody. So. To be fair, it just has a rail against Rails implementation about yeah. this for a long time, and this is the right way to organize things. <laughs> <laughs>
I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it totally is. Yeah. To be fair, it makes sense that it made, that decision was made a long time ago because NBC was a new thing. But, or at least he was let's teach PHP programmers about NBC, right? So. Yeah, yeah, and programmatically, the way Rails does it is very easy to find files. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh. I just keep going. Dude, you're on the fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so with, with, with including this in your staging app, uh, can you talk a little bit about what the, I assume there was a migration process, <coughs> like, you know, did you just move all your files at once into this, or, or were you able to kind of, little by little, move things into the right place? Yeah, no, I do it little by little. Um, the uh, Ruby class names actually don't change unless there's like a namespace and caveat, like I mentioned before in the API. But if you don't have a namespace, you can just drop files in there. Um, let's see here, if I go back to this. So like, you don't even need to rename the file. So like, if you have post, that could just be post controller, and that could just be like, cut and paste or click and drag, however you want to do it, MV. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thank you.